emotions and the world. The choice is yours. It's the, in the center of your will that you make that choice. Hallelujah. Amen. And because we have that foundation and we know that we're spirit, the Holy Spirit can flow through us. And when he's flowing through us, he's speaking pictures, he's speaking dreams, he's speaking visions, he's speaking scripture, he's speaking edification, he's speaking hope, he's speaking mercy, he's speaking forgiveness, he's speaking prophecy, showing things to come, you know, whispering from heaven to you. That's how we flow with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Any questions, please? Any questions of what we said tonight, what we may talk to tonight? Please feel free to ask any questions. Yes? I was just wondering, um, when you come up with spirit and your soul, is your consciousness within your spirit? Or your is your consciousness? So your, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's, I, I, was, I was thinking about whether your consciousness is, is your soul or your spirit, like you being alive. Your, you see, your soul is where your conscience is. Your soul is where the seat of your emotions are. Are you with me? And I would say that there is an overlap, an overflow of your soul with your physical body and your soul with your spirit. Not like they're completely separate entities. Are you with me? They overlap. But the overlap means that there is, it's, just like, it's almost like saying God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but it's one God. Are you with me? So, the same way we are spirit, soul, and body, if, if, you, if you understand what I'm saying, then there's, there's, it's almost like your consciousness it traverses all three in a way. Because your, your, your brain needs a sense of consciousness to remember things. Your soul remembers the way you put your soul and your spirit mind. If, if you understand what I'm saying. So, all three overlap and all three um, are you. But I'm saying where the strength, where the, where the power is, where the, where the life is, is from your spirit man. And that's what, what, what flows into your, into, your, into your physical body, into your, your soul, and helps your soul to rise up and have hope. Does that make sense? So, you, so I would say it's an overlap. I would say, I would separate to say your consciousness is, is in one and not the other. Does that make sense? You are all three. Any other questions? Any other deep philosophical questions? So we all know. You explain things very well. <laughs> I try. Okay. It's, it, because sometimes it's difficult to. It's sometimes it's difficult to put words to spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Because when you read the scriptures, you have to tease out this, this truth. Not like they're written all down clearly. You, know, they, you have to tease out these revelations. And to be honest, you Christians, ask, if, if we look at Jesus, Jesus was always in control of himself. That's why the Bible says he was without sin. Because he lived from that dimension of the spirit. He was in control of his physical body and of his mind and of his, his emotions. The reason why we, we, we get into sin and all kinds of stuff is because we've not parented our soul and bodies properly. If you don't parent your children, they do all kinds of unruly things when you go to the supermarket, as you know. <laughs> you know? So in the same way, if you don't parent your soul and your physical body, it will get up to all kinds of stuff. You know, we hold on to things, we don't forgive easily, we, 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 we are emotional wrecks, we just keep on regretting and looking back. We keep on kicking ourselves, you know, and convicting ourselves. And then we can't, we can't move forward because we're not allowing God's presence, God's the Son of God's presence, just pour out all the ice. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, I have not said, don't think. <laughs> I have not said, don't use your brain. What I have said is allow your spirit to be in front, at least a nose ahead of your brain and of your reasoning. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Put your spirit man that is joined with your Holy Spirit in charge of your life. But I don't say don't, I'm not saying get to save your mind. Because everything that God tells you or, or shows you, you can reason with God. God said, come, let's reason together. 
So God, you want me to do this stuff, but you know, how am I going to do it? Allow your mind to catch up with the revelation. Are you with me? Think it through. But do not allow your mind to now take over the driving seat. To say, God would have said that. Through your, are you with me? Allow your, your mind and your soul to serve revelation. What is coming from above. Let it not hijack it. Because the spirit, sorry, your, your, your soul and your body will try to um, stir up a mutiny against the spirit. They are always trying to gang up against from above because we are fallen. Are you with me? But because we are born again, our spirit man is redeemed, is now from above. So the part of you that is that is more or less clean and safe is more your spirit. Are you with me? But your soul and your body are being transformed. Hallelujah. You are learning to be more patient. You are learning to be more kind. You are learning to forgive. You are learning to not be greedy. Your soul is growing. Your, your physical body, you know, is no longer sleeping around. Your, your, your physical body, you, you've taught it to no, to no longer be subject to alcohol or to pornography. Your physical body, you're teaching it not to eat everything you see inside. You are training your physical body to catch up with the center of gravity, which is the Holy Spirit and your spirit. Are you with me? Amen. That's what the Bible says in Gal If you read Galatians, you see it's a kind of a war. There's a battle. You know, the fruit of the spirit and the works of the flesh. And the two, the Bible says, they are contrary to one another. And they're always in battle. Your body and your soul don't want to do the right thing. Just accept that. But the more you charge your spirit, the more you pray, the more you build yourself up on the word, you are gaining ascendancy over your fallen nature, over your weaker self. Your inner man is taking over. Hallelujah. Amen. I delight to do the things of God, the law of God, according to my inner man. That's what we read in, in, in the Bible. Hallelujah. So let us press into this. Um, Homework. Your homework this time is not fasting. <laughs> Your homework is I need you to attempt. I need you to attempt to read the whole of the book of Psalms before next week. Attempt. I didn't say finish it, but attempt. Now you can get Bible, Bible East. You can get an app where you can listen. When I said go through the book of Psalms, I didn't say you need to read it or you can listen. Are you with me? You can be creative. You know, um, go through the book of Psalms and attempt to finish it. Listen to the scriptures. Now, the reason why I am I'm going to be highlighting large portions of the scripture is because. I need you to download God's app. God's app is the Bible. It needs to be downloaded into your heart. Are you with me? It needs to be there. Because David said that your word have I hidden in my heart so that I do not sin. If you hide the word of God in your heart, when the enemy comes, threatening you with suicide or greed or lust or whatever, you will have strength to say no. Hallelujah. That is why when the devil came to Jesus, what did he say? It is finished. Did he take out his Bible and say it is written here? No, he just said it. It came out of him. So we're going to need to download, not Joyce Meyer. I didn't say download Bill Johnson. I'm, as good as those people are, I'm serious. Download the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Become DIY for, with the scriptures. Stop allowing somebody to break down scriptures for you and give revelation. You begin to do it yourself. You begin to grow your muscles. Amen. No matter how helpful I am, I cannot do your exercise for you. Praise the Lord. Oh yes, Bible is, there are all kinds of apps. Yes. Bible is, I am the Lord.
you know. Yes, the closer. Okay. Um, my sister, what's your name, please? Carlene. So Carlene has asked that if you have a dream, how do you know it is of God? One person answer from this table. How do you know if a dream is from God? Calmness. Calmness. The video says calmness. Peace. Okay. From that table. Joy. Joy. Okay. If you want to be in line with the word of God. Let's be in line with the word of God. Yes. Over there. Sorry? It has to be in line with the word of God. Okay. Amen. <clears throat> when you have a dream, first of all, pray. Now that we're talking about the Holy Spirit, I'm being, ask the Holy Spirit, you know, ask the Holy Spirit, what does this dream mean? Are you with me? Because when Nebuchadnezzar had his dream, he didn't have any Bible to, to read it by. I'm not saying what he said is wrong or what everybody said is wrong. All I'm saying that sometimes when, when a dream comes, the person doesn't understand the way to reference the Bible with the dream. So I would say, first of all, pray and ask the Holy Spirit what this dream means. Sometimes God allows dreams that can come across fearful or challenging. Like when, like when Pharaoh had those dreams, he was actually shaken by the fact that all these lean cows ate the fat cows. Are you with me? And it was kind of, it was, it was a challenge for him. And he was, he was terrified by the dream. So dreams can be, can be, can be challenging. Dreams can also be um, calming or directional. Like when um, Joseph had his dream and the, and the angel came to tell him what to do in the dream. And so you find out that, first of all, allow the Holy Spirit to bubble it up in your heart, what he's saying. Um, get other people to pray that are godly, to pray along with you. And that is where people who know the Bible or who know scripture can say, oh, this dream sounds like, or this scripture sounds like, or this looks like a demonic dream. I don't think this dream can be of God because of the, the themes in it. It's, there's no encouragement, there's no direction, there's no peace, it's terrifying, and all you did was run around, run around, and jump over, people trying to cut your leg off, you know. It doesn't sound like this is of God. Are you with me? So, um, when God gives dreams, um, he will, he will give clues. There are clues to in the dream sometimes. The clues sometimes are for us to decipher and to interpret. When Joseph listened to the dream of the baker and the butler, there were clues. There were threes. There were, there were birds of the air. Are you with me? So sometimes there will be clues in the dream. And some people have gone on dream courses that can tell you that some, some clues in here, this is what it might mean. Are you with me? Um, I would say that if you ha are having nightmares, you will know that this is not a dream. This is because you will wake up with fear rather than with, with peace, as somebody has said. So um, you find out that when God is speaking, God can speak in a variety of ways. In Africa, unfortunately, because of the wrong doctrine in many parts of the church, even when God is giving dreams, the dreams are interpreted in a way that oppress and take advantage of people. Are you with me sometimes? And so God, God doesn't um, 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 give you a dream so that he can create chaos. The fruit of a dream, of what you do with the dream, would also indicate where it came from. You know, the fruit of the dream is confusion and strife and bitterness and anger and regret. <coughs> it's likely not to be coming from, from God. Amen. Am I? Am I? Yes. So the, the fruit of the dream, the theme of the dream, would tell you that this is of God. But sometimes it's finding out how you interpret and the clues and how you interpret the clues in the dream. And that's something that we, shall, we can do later on in the course. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes. Um, Pastor Jay, maybe leading up uh, um, to, <coughs> sorry, rewind. When we had the interlude and we were praying and listening for God's voice, I got a poem and I wasn't really going to share it, but because you um, asked that question, it's very brief. 
and unfinished. Now it says, Holy Spirit in me, always speaking to me, in dark moments or in light, keep me on a path that's right. At first I was afraid, but then you turned my head. Remember what I said, I am your daily bread. Wow, we have some talent in the room. <laughs> Praise God. Can we stand? Can we stand? Now, um, we, we, um, we are not, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that as many people as possible can attend this course. And because of that, we put it at a level of 10 pounds, as I said, to so that it's easy for people to, to, to access. Trust me, the expenses and all the things that we're going to do to cover all the stuff to, do, to this cost is way above than £10 that we pay. On your leaflet, as I've said, that you will be taking up off -leg. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to please consider tonight to give something 